Something Positive, Changing Your Attitude About Aging by Bonnie Dixon. About a decade ago, I interviewed a woman celebrating her 105th birthday. She was funny, vibrant, and giddy with her birthday celebration, kicking her heels up over the side of an armchair for a dramatic pose like Katherine Hepburn in a movie Maven pose before practically skipping down a long hallway to get to her birthday celebration. Of course, I asked her the kinds of questions you ask someone who has reached an age that most of us will never see. She told me she never ate French fries. Never. She was quite adamant about it. While it's unlikely that eliminating French fries from your diet will add a decade or more to your lifespan, I thought, here is this beautiful woman who obviously has money. So of course I thought, maybe that's why she is so useful. Then she told me she was widowed early in her married life when her husband, a firefighter, lost his life in a home fire. She raised young kids, put them through school, and put herself through school as well. And instead of sounding tired by that early struggle and hard work, she was exhilarated. When she turned 100, someone thought to try something different for celebrating her birthday. And some volunteers from a Harley dealership brought their hogs into the foyer of the place she lived. And when someone laughingly offered her a ride, she accepted. So maybe she was lucky and had good genes, or maybe you have to be the type of person who grabs onto life with both fists. But I've known people from both of those columns and they still didn't beat her birthday candle count. So what is the secret to living longer, better, healthier? Don't ask me, I don't have the answer, but humans overall have been interested in living longer for a long time. For the most part, we have done it. We routine, routinely live into our 80s and 90s. When I was a child, there was a morning show that celebrated anyone who had reached 100 years of age. Birthday wishes and a short bio were part of every show. In 2021, the U.S. had 97 centarians and the world had 573,000. No show in the world would dedicate that much time to birthday wishes, but in the 1960s, there were just 20,119 in the world. Nearly everyone asked people who reach what we affectionately call a ripe old age how they did it. Some swear they smoke a cigar every day, drink a glass of wine, or do any number of other things we might label bad for us, or even good for us, since I've also heard, don't worry, and for the most part, we don't live to 100. Still, it's easy to imagine that there might be some secrets out there, even if the people who live to 100 and beyond don't realize they're doing something special. It's the belief of Becca Levi, a leading researcher in the fields of social gerontology and psychology of aging, and the author of Breaking the Age Code, How Your Beliefs About Aging Determine How Long and Well You Live, that internalize beliefs and growing old affect our aging. When aging is considered negative, individuals tend to experience more stress and engage less frequently in positive, healthy behaviors. Those who view it with positivity are more likely to be active and to live longer. And it's not just our own attitudes. It includes the attitudes of the people around us and how their attitudes affect our beliefs about aging. Let me give you an example, or in this case, two examples. My grandmother came out to visit us when she was in her 80s. She had something wrong with her knee and moved slowly at times because it was so painful. I took her to Target where a rude young person nearly pushed her down because she was moving too slowly and then cussed at her. Honestly, there were two doors at the entrance to every Target and she was in one of them. He was young enough, he could have gone around her. She's been gone for years, but I rarely think of that episode without hoping dire things for that young man as he ages because we either age and die or we just die. Those are the options. So move forward to 2023. 
my mom who broke her femur a couple of years ago can start off a bit slow in the mobility department is getting ready to leave the store. I go to hold open the door for her and a group of young people bow to her, graciously hold the door for her and treat her with a great deal of kindness. I am sorry to say they didn't speak English. Sorry, because I can almost guarantee if they had, they would not have been kind to her. Their behavior left a smile on my mother's face and kind thoughts in my heart. Every day, I run into people who make throwaway comments about aging, whether it is the way someone drives, makes decisions, uses a computer, etc. Americans have stereotypically negative attitudes about aging and about the aged, even as we become a country of aging adults. In 1960, the median age for an American was 29.5, and a few decades later, it was 38.8. Levi's studies found that people with pod positive age beliefs live longer, almost eight years longer, even considering things like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, and smoking, our beliefs about aging were shown to have a stronger impact on life expectancy. Levi recommends becoming aware of how ageism and age beliefs are mirrored in our society and suggests we shift the finger pointing to the actual culprit. Take for instance, the very popular notion that forgetfulness occurs only in the older adult. Yet we all remember studying for tests and not remembering things we had only just recently known quite well. Forgetfulness happens when we become stressed or distracted. In Animal Vegetable Miracle, Barbara Kingsalva writes about how her mother-in-law once told her husband when he was a child that he could keep a monkey if he won one. So he won one. I'm sure she rued the day she was so distracted by other duties and things that she didn't ask herself how he might win one or what made him so specific in his ask. But she didn't think to herself that she wouldn't have made that same mistake if only she was younger. So how do you challenge those negative beliefs? One way is to return to someone after they have made an ageist remark and tell them, I was thinking about what you were saying and research shows that's not the case. I often explain to older adults who have had their first accident ever that many younger people have many more accidents. An older person having an accident is not necessarily a cause for concern any more than if a middle-aged person had an accident, except that older people often get more injured. The research doesn't back up that older people have more accidents or they, that they are less safe to drive. It does back up that they are aware of more limitations in their driving and far more likely to adjust their driving as a result for those limits, but that doesn't equate to it being the older adult's fault that an accident happened or that someone got hurt. Another way to challenge ageist belief is to spend time with younger generations to cement a bond with them so they don't automatically determine that all older adults are one thing or another. The benefit of this exchange is that as an older adult, you may find something interesting about the younger generation and by finding ways to become part of a more expansive group of people, you just might become part of the solution to dispel negative myths about older adults. I can't guarantee you'll live longer, but I think you will live better.